Hi, and welcome back to the video on inference for regression, part two, on chapter 27. So again, let's go back to where we left off. I believe it was around here. Um, this is the formula we would use for confidence intervals. So this is B plus or minus T star times the standard error sub B, or SE sub B. Now the SE sub B has a formula all its own, and that is equal to S all over the sum of your residuals. And these are the difference in your X values. This and now remember your normal model is vertical on these type of problems because it's the Y values that are actually distributed normally. So that means your variance and your residuals are dealing with your X values. That's why we have X's here. So, our degrees of freedom are still n minus 2, so we'll move forward with that. Okay, so your linear regression, inference on the slope of a line, of our justifications for your intervals are similar to what we had to do before for our t-tests, or our linear regression t-tests. Now here again, you need to look at those four things. You can't have your data all clustered. It has to be spread out. When you look at your residual graph, it cannot have any type of um, pattern to it. When you look at a normal quartile plot, it should not have any outliers. Again, you're looking for your normal distribution. You look at the scatter plot itself, and it needs to be relatively straight. And then, of course, just like before, it has to be independent and random. So once you have these conditions met, and again, just like before, I mentioned that there's a list of three, but there's really four things that we're looking for. Don't forget the one where it's that clustered data. We're not allowed to have a cluster of data and make a line through it, especially if it's clustered only on one end. All right, so if the conditions are met, then we move on with our inference test. So we must start off with a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. Now here, in an inference test, our beta is equal to zero, aka your slope is equal to zero. Well, what does that mean? It means that our, we don't have a slope. There's not really a change. Status quo is going on. Um, there's no change. The slope is zero. And there's not really a lot of useful information or linear relationship Remember, this is a, a test on, on linear regression. So if you have beta is equal to 0, there's not a, a useful linear relationship is what the null hypothesis is telling us. And likewise, your alternative hypothesis then would be that b doesn't equal 0. And remember, when you have a not equals, there's a two-sided test here. So please remember that when you get to your final end and where you're substituting into your formula. All right, so what does this mean? It means that there is a change, that slope is not zero, and that there really is useful linear information or relationship here when beta doesn't equal zero. This test statistic that we're using is a T, and T is equal to B over SE sub B. And that's your standard error sub B. So how do you get your standard error sub B? The same way that you did before. It's S divided by the square root of the sum of your residuals. And don't forget your degrees of freedom is still N minus 2. Okay, so once you do that, we need to make sure you understand that the SC sub B is the standard error of your slope. And that S, right, this is SC, this is your standard error of your slope. And that S is our sample estimate of the common standard deviation of errors around that true line. So that's your, there's your estimate of the common standard deviation. So, we get our value for our t. And then just like before, and all of since like chapter 18, um, we'll have a p-value, and from the p-value, we'll, we will either reject our null hypothesis, 
And when you do that, it really is standing for, or what it means is that there is a useful linear relationship between um, uh, our X and Y. So again, when we reject it, that means that our alternative hypothesis is quote unquote true. We don't really like to use the word true because that it, we just don't do that. So um, we would say something that there is a useful linear relationship between X and Y. And otherwise, we fail to reject, and again, that's quote-unquote when the null hypothesis is quote-unquote true, and again, you don't use the word true, but that's really kind of what we're looking at, and that just means that there was no, there's no slope, there's no change, and there's not a lot of information or useful information linear to show that there's a linear relationship between X and Y. Okay, so here's an example. And we have done this one in class. So uh, this one, again, was about the Leaning Tower of Pisa. And there's uh, a whole mess of information about measurements. These are the measurements that are given. So go ahead and put those in. You can pause the video. Go ahead and put these um, values. You have an explanatory variable uh, as your year. And your response variable is the lean of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. And the way that they did their lean, here's what they said. Remember, we talked about this in class. 2.9 is the starting, but it's always going to have that. So 2.9 meters. But this data here is the hundreds, thousands, and ten thousandths decimal places past the 2.9. So, for example, in 1975, um, our data was 2.9642 meters. But instead of writing 2.9642, we're just writing 642 in our y value. So when we get to the explanation of that, please be careful in that. That's your, that's tenths of a millimeter. All right, so... Our question then, does there appear to be clear evidence there's a strong linear relationship between year and lean? Again, then that's what we're looking for. That's what this test is going to tell us. So our parameter, beta, is equal to the true mean change in lean per year for the leaning tower of Pisa. Our null hypothesis is that um, beta is equal to zero, and our alternative is that beta does not equal zero. Again, please go back to that last section if you forget what those mean. Our conditions, the residual should be normally distributed. So when you go to a normal uh, probability plot, that's um, when you go to the type, that's option six. It should be linear. And that means once it is linear and you look at it, it is the conditions met. Don't forget to look at your... Um, scatter plot you want to make sure that you look at your scatter plot you should not have clusters of data if you do it falls short and it does not meet its condition you must have spread out data and it has to be consistent um, please reference your textbook make sure you read over that chapter 27 to get a better understanding of what I'm talking about the second condition is the y values at any given y value should be approximately normal and have the same standard deviation. So here's our scatter plot. As you can see, it's pretty much normal in that it's linear, in that the, um, the conditions met. We're going to assume, just like we talked about earlier in the previous video in part one, is that the same standard deviation, so all of this here, and all of these here and all of these here, that standard deviations of as we move forward with all of the data, that the standard deviations of each of those x values will be the same. Um, or the, the distribution of the y values will be all the same, right? Because as we look at the normal model that goes along these x values, our normal model is vertically drawn. And when you have that linear progression that goes up, that normal model here, the standard deviation of the normal model are the same all the way through. And then lastly, it says that the sample should be random and independent. And in this particular problem, we're going to assume that the Leaning Tower of Pisa's data 
um, are random and independent. All right, so our conditions are met. So we will move forward with a t-test for slope, which also we, we call it the um, inference for regression t-test, or sometimes just shortened to regression t-test. Now I'm going to pause here on my time. Um, see on my time, so I'll come back in the third video.